This is breaking news from NBC 12. We want to take you back live now to the scene of the crime, the Greyhound bus station on North Boulevard. For this afternoon, a gunman opened fire, sending four people to the hospital, including a Virginia State trooper with critical injuries. Two civilians also hurt. The gunman was shot dead, but many questions remain, including what may have sparked this senseless crime. And before the colonel gets to the podium, we should tell you that one of the two civilians shot was a female member of the University of Bing uh, the University of Bur uh, Binghamton, Binghamton, New York, the track team. They were en route there uh, for a track meet. We're told she is in good condition. Her injuries are not said to be life-threatening. F-L-A-H-E-R-T-Y. He is the Virginia State Police Superintendent. Good evening, everyone. I appreciate, I appreciate your patience. Uh, this has been a uh, tough evening for us, a tough afternoon. I, I want to begin by saying thank you. Uh, thank you to, to Chief Durham and, and the men and women of the Richmond Police Department. Their, their quick response here, their support, they've been working with us very closely in this investigation. They secured the scene, been providing uh, various types of assistance, interviewing witnesses, uh, helping gather evidence. We also had a number of other law enforcement agencies here in Rico County PD, the FBI, ATF, Homeland Security and the uh, U.S. Marshal Service. So we thank all of them for for being here and, and pitching in uh, on this night. It's uh, with an incredibly heavy heart tonight that I announce to you the loss of Virginia State Police Trooper Chad Deermeyer. Chad died as a result of uh, his injuries suffered during a shooting this afternoon at the Greyhound Bus Station right here at the 2900 block of uh, the Boulevard in the city of Richmond. At approximately 2.40 p.m. today, Trooper Dermeyer approached an adult male subject inside the front doors of the bus station. During the course of talking with the male subject, the male subject pulled out a handgun and shot Chad multiple times. The male subject continued firing his weapon as two other state police troopers returned fire. During the exchange of gunfire, the male subject moved into the terminal's restaurant the shooter continued to be combative once EMS crews arrived on the scene to render him aid. He was transported to VCU Medical Center where he later died. His remains have been transported to the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner for autopsy and examination. We've confirmed the male subject's identification, but we're not in a position right now to uh, identify him because we're in the process of notifying next of kin. Uh, so his name will not be released. We've recovered his handgun. Uh, during the course of the gunfire, two adult females were also wounded. Uh, they were shot and have non-life-threatening injuries and are being treated for those at uh, MCV. No other law enforcement personnel, no other citizens were, uh, were injured during the shooting. Trooper Deermeyer was, um, was among about a dozen state police troopers that uh, been participating in the specialized training uh, on criminal interdiction practices. They had completed the uh, classroom part of the training and they were here at the bus station uh, during the, uh, the practicals at the time of the shooting. Trooper Deermeyer encountered the male subject as part of that training. Uh, Chad was a native of Jackson, Michigan. He had been in the Marine Corps. He had served as a police officer in Jackson, Michigan. He served as a police officer in Newport News, Virginia before coming to the Virginia State Police and graduating the academy in 2014. Uh, his original patrol assignment with us was in Chesapeake area uh, in what we call Area 46, which encompasses Newport News and Hampton. Uh, he just recently transferred to our counterterrorism uh, and criminal interdiction unit, and that was the purpose of the training that he was uh, undergoing. He's survived by his wife, Michelle, and two children. This investigation is still in its infant stages, even though we've been working for hours and a lot of, lot of manpower has been expended, but we'll be here all night uh, with the crime scene phase and there are a number of witnesses that we have yet to interview. So there are many more unanswered questions than there are questions that are, are really answerable. I'd ask that everyone keep the family in their thoughts and prayers, as well as the families of the two innocent females that were injured as well. 
uh, it was quite a tragedy for all of us. I will attempt to answer a few questions, but I, I apologize up front that the, there may be a number of things that I can't Colonel, speak to. Do you have any idea why this person did this, why this gunman was there? We, we do not. We don't know if he was here visiting and happened to be at the bus station or if he had come come here uh, and, and just gotten off the bus. Can you tell us what kind of handgun was used? I, I can't at this particular point in time. Sense of what criminal interdiction training means? What was, what was going on? What were they doing? Well, this is a specialized team that, that usually works public transportation or they work uh, highway uh, interdiction, uh, stopping vehicles. We've been very successful over time in finding big caches of drugs weapons and other things in, in these types of, of trainings. So the training encompasses looking for suspicious activity. And in today's exercise, if you see some suspicious activity, go over and, and engage and have a conversation. And that was what was taking place here. And very early stages of the conversation uh, is when uh, the other subject pulled a weapon and, and shot Chad multiple times. Colonel, can you tell us if this guy wanted for something? That? At this particular point in time, we found no, uh, no evidence of him being wanted. Uh, he has a history of, of charges, but we haven't been able to sort through what convictions he made. Was your trooper wearing a vest or what kind of uniform was he in? He was in a fatigue style uniform, which is what typically what our CCI people wear. Uh, he was not wearing a vest uh, at, at this particular point in time. Our policy encourages but doesn't require, and of course, in this training setting, uh, I think maybe he uh, chose not to wear it at that particular point in time. Colonel, the two women, were they possibly hit by friendly fire or you can't say at this point? We don't know at this point. I mean, we know where they ended up, but we don't know uh, where they were because of quite a bit was, was going on during the time. So we're not sure at this particular point in time. Colonel, was the gun registered to the uh, suspect? I, I don't know. Can Colonel, you tell do us you know that the, if the suspect is from the Richmond area at all? I know you don't want to put out his Yeah, we, we, he's not as far as we know at this point, but we don't know what ties he has here. Had he been on a bus at the Greyhound Station? I don't know, but... Can you tell us exactly where the shooting happened here? Was it inside? It was near the restaurant, uh, right at the at the entrance to the restaurant. Could you please spell the, the shooter's name? Yeah, it's, it's Dermyer. It's uh, D-E-R-M-Y-E-R. -E -E His first name is Chad, middle initial P. It's in Paul. How old was he? You I'm sorry. Do you know how old he was? Uh, 37. 37. Yes. Colonel, have you completely ruled out any connection to terrorism in any way that he may have been oh, no. inspired by terrorism? There, there's no indication of anything like, like that. Uh, I mean, there's not much that we've ruled out, but certainly there's no indication of, of terrorism. What was, what was the trooper questioning the man about at the time? I suspect it was just casual conversation to engage him. Uh, I don't know. The, the period of time they were together was so brief that I can't imagine that he'd gone much further than, hey, how are you, where are you going, anybody with you, this, you know, just small talk. Was there, were there security cameras in there? There are cameras, we've, we've gotten a lot of footage, but we haven't had a chance to sort through it and see what we have or what we don't have. Quality, you know, I don't know how good the quality is gonna be on the film. But. Any idea what may have caused this man to react the way he did? We, we, we don't know. Why he reacted, why he had a gun in his waistband, we don't know. Colonel, tough year for law enforcement already this year, particularly in Virginia. Can you talk about how uh, your folks deal with an issue, something like this, when it happens? Well, well it's, I'll tell you what I was doing when I found out about this. I was at uh, a meeting of the International Association of Chiefs of Police, where I serve on the board. And uh, this is our annual mid-year. I was standing in front of a crowd with 16 other state police and provincial police um, executives and we were paying tribute to the 28 state and provincial police officers who were killed in the last 12 months. We were lighting a candle for Trooper Nate Smith, who we lost back in November, and other troopers and constables and officers from other police agencies, Puerto Rico, Ontario, a Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and, and other states. So um, I had just thought to myself, because 28 was the biggest number we've had in a long time, um, I hope and pray that next year we don't have 28, not knowing that within just a few seconds out here of, of Chad's loss. Any illegal drugs found on the scene? Uh, no, not at this point, but we've got a lot of evidence to sift through. Uh, we, we've identified some bags that are possibly his. So. What was the suspect doing that first originally drew the attention of the trooper? I, I don't know. I don't know. When you say the interaction between the two was brief, how yes. long are we talking? Uh, a matter of 
I would say 30 seconds or so, they just kind of casually bumped into one another and started talking to the peers. Colonel, I know this is really early on, but we've been seeing these cases with this type of training. It's all about talking to people who look suspicious. And there have been uh, law enforcement officers who've been uh, victims of violence just by talking to somebody. Do you have any thoughts on this type of training, if it needs to be changed in any way? No, we haven't got, we haven't got that far along, but certainly when this is over, we're going to review what took place and, and see what, what, if anything, we need to do different. Colonel, what type of weapon was recovered? I don't know. It was a handgun, but I, I don't know at this point. Was he a passenger? Was he about to get on a plane? We, we don't know. Was he traveling alone? Was there anybody? Else? We, we don't know. We don't know. We no. know he's not, the address we have for him is not in Virginia, but we don't know where he's going to or from or whether he was here visiting. Okay, you've been sure. listening to Colonel Stephen Flaherty with the uh, Flaherty with the State Police Department confirming what we had feared all along this afternoon, the death of 37-year-old Trooper Chad Deermeyer. Uh, Trooper Deermeyer was a native of uh, Jackson, Mississippi, part of a criminal interdiction unit with Virginia State Police. He's a former Marine uh, who'd also served on the police force in Newport News. He just graduated from the academy in 2014, and the superintendent saying that they had just completed their classroom training for this, and they were doing their practical at the Greyhound bus station, interacting with members of the public when uh, this gunman, who, uh, whose name they're not releasing, they have identified him, but they're trying to reach next of kin. This man walked up and shot the trooper at close range. He leaves behind a wife and two children. We have several crews working this story. You can look for the latest when you join us later tonight on the News at 11.